Good evening and welcome to the NCC Newsroom at the Newhouse School of Public Communications. I'm Sam harris And I'm Dominic Orellana. This is a 9 o'clock final stream for Democracy in Action, an annual election day project covering voting around Onondaga County, run by the various Newhouse journalism departments. Throughout the day, we are continuing to bring you live coverage from dozens of polling places in central New York. It is now 9 p.m., so now the New York polls are closed. Voters who are still in line will still be able to cast their ballots. We're still waiting for results from several key races, including the race for New York's 24th congressional district between Donna Balter and John Katko. To stay updated on the latest results from Onondaga County, go to ongov.net slash elections. And 22 has displayed record voter turnout. Reporter Chris Sachi went to multiple polling sites to see how voters of all ages use their voices. Voters and volunteers alike came by on election day, complete with social distancing guidelines and directions. And perhaps true to form for a high school, there was a good batch of young voters. We all knew that it was important and we all wanted to have our first experience voting together just to say that we did that. Like it's yeah. our first time, we made a change, our vote matters. Alexandria and her friends behind her are Lemoyne College students. She pointed out that increased activism in a crazy 2020 year might have a certain side effect. Everything going on really sparks something in all young voters. COVID, there are riots and everything going on. There's saying riots after this. It's just everyone needs to come together. And if we can all vote, even if it's all different types of vote. As long as you vote, it makes a difference. Now from Nottingham High School to a place near downtown Syracuse. Welcome to the Nancy Cantor Warehouse on West Fayette Street. I'm Chris Sachi reporting for Democracy in Action. Behind me, everyone is getting ready to vote. The polling stations are open and ready for today. Here, the crowd had a bit more experience. The more and more I've gotten older, the more divisive the country's gotten. You know, you get, you have your, your voice at least heard to vote, and that's what I appreciate. You know, I've always been, I am keenly aware that elections have consequences, and uh, I've always sort of understood that since I've been voting um, 18 years old. The fact that we've faced so many challenges uh, has activated people's citizenry and willingness to participate in their government, you know, and so voting is certainly that way of showcasing your voice. Reporting from the Nancy Cantor Warehouse near downtown Syracuse, I'm Chris Sachi for Democracy in Action. As polls are closing in several states nationwide, we have an updated look on where the general election currently stands. As of right now, former Vice President Joe Biden has an 85 to 61 lead on President Donald Trump. The president does have a slight lead in Florida and Georgia, while Vice President Biden has come out strong with a big lead in Pennsylvania. One state to take note is that Texas is currently leaning in Joe Biden's favor. The battle for votes continues in Florida. Newhouse students who are not on campus visited polling sites in Miami. Democracy in Action, Adrian Morales takes us there. On what's being called the election of a lifetime, this Miami Lakes Florida polling place is relatively quiet. During early voting, the line was out the door. Not so today. But that hasn't stopped passionate supporters from getting out to campaign for their candidate. I just felt that the country really needed us to step up and support it, that we needed to be uh, representing uh, the values of America. Ralph Rakert has been campaigning next to 78-year-old Miriam Campos for the past two weeks. Despite their political differences, the two have been getting along. People are coming up to us and saying that, you know, that we have so much courage, how can you do that? This is America, don't let anybody intimidate you. This is the United States, we have a right to voice our opinions. I have my hat and my shirt, and I hope they can read it and see it. So it's, uh, it's very important, but... I don't like to harass people. 62% of Florida voters voted early or by mail. But the few voting at this polling station today will still be greeted by the flags and signs of those who have been campaigning at this polling place for weeks. I have been here working for 15 days, for 12, 14 hours a day, and I'm happy to do it. And I hope we can celebrate tonight. 
It is a battle for the soul and the health of our country. For Democracy in Action, I'm Adrienne Morales, Miami Lakes, Florida. Even though the polls have closed New York, Democracy in Action is still posting our coverage of the 2020 election. Check out our interactive map at dia/cny.syr.edu to check it out. Whether you're in Cicero or Baldwinsville or Skinny Atlas, just click the link and it will take you over to our website and there you will get all of our coverage and our articles of our coverage of polling stations all across Onondaga County. That's all for the Six Democracy in Action live stream today. We want to say an, a special thank you to our partners, WAER Radio, Syracuse.com, and the News House. From all of us at the New House School, I'm Dominic Orellana. And I'm Sam Harris-Simowitz. Thank you for joining us here at Democracy in Action.